get no money if you constantly worried about what everybody else got to say. If you constantly got your eyes on what everybody else doing, you ain't get no money. When it comes down to closing a deal, I get you done. Every single one. Hey, welcome to Cornology. And I have none other than Mr. Mailman with me. Mail is in the house. In the building. Yes, all the way from the VA. Number, what's up? We go all the way back. Number three. Number three, Trey. 94. Trey, 94, yeah. We all way back. VA, VA, VA. I'm so excited to have Mel here, y'all. And if you didn't know, that was one of his artists. Mm -hmm. That was Maceo. Yep. Uh, record called Next Tale Chirp. Tell us a little bit about it. Wow. Uh, Maceo is um, really well known. He has free bands. Not, you know, right now he runs with Future. Uh, we did a deal with Future. And uh, he's over there, but oh, Maceo, okay. He just said we did a deal with Future. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Did did. I had Maceo for a little bit of time. Quick flip in '94, and we drop a uh, whole sit down. Okay. Uh, which was this old records? These are old records. Mm -hmm. you know, whole sit down, and then uh, the second record was Next Hill Church. Okay. Okay. Uh, which was really a street banger, but yeah. Yeah. Ma see, this is the thing, y'all. Don't sleep on this. Mail goes way back. Right, way back in the indie streets of the ATL, yeah, dirty south, yeah, yeah. Okay, I met Mel probably about over a decade ago, right? Way more than that, it was probably yeah, way yeah, more yeah, than yeah, that, right? Yeah. I met Mel, um, and someone was like, You need to meet Mel, you you know, you. I was just getting started in the entertainment industry, I was doing the transition from corporate. And moving over into entertainment, and Mel was definitely doing his thing. And they said, "You guys got to meet." We met, we connected, and through the years, we've always did some collaborations and so forth. Um, what's some, totally amazing to me is after all of your many accomplishments, how incredibly humble you have remained. What do you What do you uh, attribute that to? Wow. Well, you know, number really like. Um it's only God, really. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. uh, I was blessed to be here. Mm -hmm. you know, just to be honest, um, I just turned 50. Whoa, 50? 50. 50 on Thanksgiving, right? Whoa, so, you know, okay. That's, that's 50 summers. Yeah. So that I'm like, wow, I'm still here. Yeah. So it's really God. Especially coming from the streets of VA. It's coming from the street. Just, just you know, the streets, period. Mm -hmm. um, you know, without spending no crazy time in the sale or in you know not mm -hmm. in the cemetery like it's a blessing to me anytime mm -hmm. so that's kind of where i'm at um i give uh, him the glory you know, well first of all congratulations and happy birthday yeah, that's a big deal um let's go back to your early beginning so let's talk about it where, where are you actually from norfolk norfolk right norfolk. Norfolk, right? <laughs> All right, so born and raised. Born and raised. I'm born in Norfolk General. All right. No. Oh, man. Okay, so born then. In Norfolk General. But I lived in Virginia Beach. Okay. And um, went to high school in Virginia Beach. And, okay. Um, yeah, so. Norfolk. High school. And was was college always in the in the trajectory, or how did, how did that come about? Because, you know, a lot of young black men, that's not necessarily in their trajectory back then, right? So, right. so what was it for you? Really, uh, no, college was not on the list. Okay. At all. Okay. Like um, I can remember, really, just like counselors, like, no, nah, college is not for you. you really? Know? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's not for you. And then my, you know, my my mom would remind me, you know, they said it ain't for you. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I think uh, what happened really is I had an opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, HBCU, Virginia State, gave me an opportunity to come um, a semester or, or the summer before school starts mm -hmm. to try to get my shit together. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. So I did that. And uh, bef the day before I left, you know, I'm, in, I'm doing something I ain't supposed to be doing. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Anyway, you know, my, my people's put me in the car, dropped me off, and that has changed my whole trajectory. Really? And yeah, because I end up, you know, doing okay. Mm hmm And, um... So you just fell upon college. Yeah. College was not on my radar 
You okay. said, I'm going to just try this out and see if it works. It was like, you know, I, I, you know, in trouble. Mm-hmm. You know, it's either I'm going to do this or I'm going to go to military. At that time, mm-hmm. I had signed up to do, uh, to go in the Marines. Okay. So, um, you know, I had some options, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, I went to college and they said, hey, you don't have the grades. Mm-hmm. My GPA was shit. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I, I wasn't mm-hmm. a student. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I wasn't, I was a jock mm-hmm. and I was a um, musician. So what, what sport did you play? Football. Okay. Did you go on a football scholarship there? No. So, okay. So this is the thing. What are your thoughts on HBCUs? Because I know there's a lot of discussion right about now because, you know, Dion. Mm-hmm. You know, Coach Prime decided to leave Jackson State and right. move over to Colorado. I personally think it was a great opportunity for him, but it may be difficult, difficult or different for me because I went to PWIs, right? So, what are your thoughts on that? What is PWI? Uh, predominantly white institutes. Got you. So, you know, I went to Virginia Commonwealth University DC. undergrad, and yeah. I went to University of Maryland graduate school. Wow. So, I have a different. Um, perspective on the decisions that he made, but there, you know, some hardcore HBCU grads, which I can also understand because we have different experiences. Because I look at you guys' homecomings and I'm like, damn, I missed out. Right, right, right. Okay. Right. Yes. So I, I, I'm trying to, um, you know, also be sensitive to the fact that a lot of people are upset about him choosing to to leave an HBCU to go to a predominantly white institute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. It is a big issue right now. Um, I think that, um, first of all, I, I support Dion because mm-hmm. I believe that his heart is in the right place. Mm-hmm. Right? I think that he, if he can take Colorado's program and, and make it better, cool. Somebody else got to step in his. And follow behind him, right? Follow behind him at Jackson State. Maybe that's for the next guy. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm totally with him. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like Coach Prime did his thing for Jackson State. I think he gave a lot of young black men opportunities. Mm-hmm. And now it's time for him to move on. Sometimes you have to make decisions for yourself and your family. Right. And still there's young African-American boys that are going to Colorado that will still need that Coach Prime um, leadership. Right. So, you know, that that was really something. So, went off to college, pledged Omega Sci Fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how did that come? So, how did that come to be? You didn't want to go to college, well, right? I'm talking about the bros. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I should have. Let me tell you my story, my first story with the Qs, okay? I was in, I was probably first week in college. Uh-huh. And VCU. VCU. Okay. Went to a, a, a party. I don't even, it must have been a cute party. It was a pool party. And I'm walking all in green. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, you know, da, da. Yeah. And what did the cues do? They come and grab me up and yeah, throw yeah. me in the pool. Yeah, for sure. I'm like, what? And, and I was so angry. For sure, for sure. For the whole four years. Oh, if it's a cute, no, I'm not interested. No, no, I was mad. Yeah. Now all the women saying, if they ain't cues. Yeah, you know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> all the women like, we want a cue. I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So talk to so, so, so how did you end up becoming the Q? I mean, really, like, the bros really kind of uh, on, on Virginia State campus mm-hmm. were that crew of guys that mm-hmm. kind of, like, worked, mm-hmm. hung out. You know, they did their thing as far as community service, but they also was visible. Mm-hmm. Um, I just didn't feel the other fraternities. Okay. You know what I mean? I can't see you in is another fraternity either. I just couldn't see. Like, it just didn't work. So, okay. Um. You know, so I approached it my first my first opportunity, which was what your sophomore year, mm-hmm. year. and so uh, I, I did it freshman year. Okay. I didn't pledge freshman; I pledged sophomore. But I went up immediately. Big mistake, Mel. This mm-hmm. is what happens when you don't have uh, legacy in your family, mm-hmm. because I walked up first week, freshman week, to the AKAs and went up and said, hi, my name is Ebony, and I'm interested in being a member of your sorority. And I caught hell uh, until I was able to pledge in sophomore year. But I was like, they was like, okay, you weren't supposed to say anything until like the semester before. And I ran my mouth. I was so eager. Well, you know, number one, what's the number one rule? Protect the chat. Yep. Yep. That's the number one rule. Yep. You know. I get it. I, I, you know, so I, I approached the bros and, you know, first try didn't really go well. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And at that time, I really was getting my feet wet, you know, on the yard. But remember, I'm, I was the guy who was doing all the parties. Okay. Okay, I didn't know that. So you were a party promoter. I was a, pro- I was a party promoter, and I'm a music major. Okay, so you were another Diddy on campus. Yeah. Because Diddy was o- at, over at Howard just to throw parties. Yeah. So okay. We had Dolls Effects. We had, uh, uh, you know, Lost, Lost Boys hung out with us a uh-huh. lot at, at State. But, yeah, I was throwing the parties. You know, $2 Tuesdays and $5 Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Always for that coin, right? The farmer's market. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So that, um, you know, brought attention. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can bring out, you know, two, 300 freshmen. You know, on a Tuesday mm-hmm. for a canned food drive and two dollars, and you about to have this thing jumping. Jumping. So I'm sure you probably had a big crossover party when you yeah. crossed. Yeah, yeah, I knew it was probably crazy. And then the band. You know, I, I, I'm a music major. Mm-hmm. I'm a, remember, I'm real creative at heart. Mm-hmm. I'm a musician. So you knew from the time before you went to Virginia State that you wanted to do music. Have you always known I want to do music? Honestly, yeah. But when I got to college. Um, it was like engineering. They were, you know, I kind of mm-hmm. got pushed into, maybe not even pushed, but electrical engineering. I like to take shit apart, put it back together, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, figure out how it worked. And so I, I, I moved, went that way. Okay. And, and, and then I fell out of love with it. Mm-hmm. And so I went to my first love, which was music. Were you supposed to be a rapper? No. So you always knew you weren't a rapper? No, right. I used to be a rapper, Mel. They called me MC Glamorous One. MC, I was cold. MC Glamorous One. Yes, okay. I was cold. Okay. Still cold. <laughs> I'm cold. We to get the beat. <laughs> the I, beat. I'm, I'm cold. Anytime you need any cameos. Okay, <laughs> okay so talk to me. I never really like, you know, <laughs> rapping was cool, but I, I more so was like the business. I, I love the business of what's going on. But at that time, it was all about learning more about production and classical music and Okay. And, 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 you know, bands and, and that type of thing. So your dream, once you graduated, you thought you wanted to do what? Uh, open, start a label. Okay, so you did what you wanted to do. Yeah. Okay, so you so did you graduate or did you just leave or how did I that did go? Graduate. Okay, so you graduated. And then how did you transition? So what was next after graduation? Really, I came to Atlanta. Like, right after graduation? Well, you know what? Honestly, like, I came to Atlanta a couple times to freak me. You know what? I missed every freak Nick because I every this was good for me. I was a sorority girl. So every weekend of freak Nick, we had our national. Uh, no, we had our regional conference. Okay. So I and I was the president, of course, of my chapter. So I had to always be on AKA duty. Mm-hmm. So I miss freak Nick. Got you. But I can see you at Freak Nick. I'm there. Okay, so right. you was down here, Freak Nick, and what? Nikki's. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for Nikki. <laughs> like, I'm at Nikki's. Like, what? So I, I, I got a whiff of Atlanta, uh-huh. a whiff of, you know, the city. Mm-hmm. It felt like this was kind of like, you know, Black Mecca. Mm-hmm. It and was. Like, we talking, what, 94? 90 Real estate was low. Real estate low. Like, you can come down here and pretty much do you. Crime was low. Coming from Virginia where it's like... Nothing. You and I could not have survived. Well, we would have found a way to survive in Virginia, right? But doing what we do, I don't know that it exists. No. Well, you know what? We got to back up because Pharrell. Yeah. Missy. Pharrell, Missy. uh, You know, the clips. Yeah. Yeah. Family, uh, Mad Skills. Mad Skills. You know, Mad Skills spent all his time on my yard and never attended one class. I thought all this time that Mad Skills was a student. He was on yard every single day. Yeah. Never attended a class. Big time. Dope, right? If, if you know Virginia, you know Mad Skills. Did he get a deal? I'm not sure. I can't really speak. To Man. Him. And then Clips, right? They clips. Screwed up deal, right? Well, that whole situation. Is screwed crazy. up. It, it, it's really, see, because their manager is like my play cousin. We're from okay. the same block. Okay. So it was a lot going on. Mm-hmm. You know, but between um, the Clips, Family, Mad Skills, my boy, I got a you know, Spade One, mm-hmm. big time DJ. And he's in Richmond right now. DJ Cool. DJ Cool. DJ Cool. Oh, Cool, yeah, yeah. You remember so, him? Yeah, yeah, of course. I cool remember. used to turn the parties out. Of course. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, the parties was one thing for me. That kind of brought me to the bros. Mm-hmm. That kind of, like, put that together. And then, boom, I really wanted to start a label. I was managing artists in school, you know, in college. And 
I'm in the band and I'm doing all kind of shit. Mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. Honestly, like I'm hustling. I'm doing my thing. Hustling. I'm of course I'm hustling. So you hustling what? Uh, you know I'm hustling. Movement things. Yeah. Movement things. Okay. And, and, and I got the band on lock. Okay. So you so the band was your customer. The band, my customer. Baked in customer. <laughs> <laughs> I got a hundred folks that's right. coming up to the door every uh-huh. you know every mm-hmm. time they need something. But uh, moving forward, you know, I came to Atlanta mm-hmm. and uh, immediately started this hitting the club, mm-hmm. beating the streets. Mm-hmm. What was your intention? Let me get in the game. Mm-hmm. I, I need in. I ain't, I'm not from here. You just like you like. I don't know what I need to do, but I just want in. I need in. You need in, and so I'm sure there was quite a few doors closed before somebody opened that door, right? Yeah. Any no any names we know that you hit up? I want in. I want in. I want in. And then like, eh, not right now. Uh, you know, it's probably it's a blur. It's honestly. a blur. Yeah, it, uh-huh. is, it is a blur. You know, honestly, um, I spent a lot of time in the club gathering at that time. Mixtapes and shit mm-hmm, like that mm-hmm. going around and, and then you leaving the club and you stopping, you stepping on all these mixtapes. Everybody done threw them down once you gave them to them. I'm, but I'm the dude that's looking, that's calling the numbers on them. Okay, so you actually listening to these tapes? I'm not listening. I'm calling to see who did who, it. Who behind this? Okay, all right. So you looked at it differently. Cause you doing something that I need to like. Okay. So like you know, if I got your mixtape, I'm gonna call. Yo, you need help? All right. Did that work? <laughs> it worked. Okay. Eventually, it worked. Where, all right. Where um, uh, Triad Records, mm-hmm. which at that time had MCA, had uh, 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 distributing Tupac mm-hmm. at that time. Uh, what else we had? But anyway, that that's kind of how I got into with Triad to Power, and I had my first hit record, uh, The Dip, oh. in '95. Okay, okay. That's kind of how that. That whole thing played Did out. that change your life? The hit record? A lot of people think uh, that first hit record, you become a millionaire. Nah. It, it, it did. Okay. It, it did it, change your it life? It did change because, um, you know, this is the first successful record. Mm-hmm. You know, what I learned, uh, Ebony, is at that time, I'm beating the phones down. I'm calling radio stations. I'm calling distribution outlets. I'm doing every. I'm calling clubs. Mm-hmm. I'm in the retail stores, like I'm pulling up to the radio station. <coughs> I'm servicing Ludacris and I'm servicing mm-hmm. these people at the station. I'm um, Chris Lover Love, right? Chris Lover Lover and, and Poon Daddy. Yep. I'm servicing them. Mm-hmm. I'm meeting with Shaka. And I, I'm Shaka. I'm, I'm meeting with Shaka. He yeah. good, but I'm he good. With okay, him. good. Yeah. Because at the time he's the mix show director, mm-hmm. but I put in that work. Mm-hmm. That's the part, Mel, a lot of people don't want to talk about is the work. This is why I usually get real frustrated sometimes with the youth today because we didn't have social media, right? right? And back then, you didn't even, yeah, you barely had that, right? right? And we used to have to hit the pavement for anything. If you wanted a job, if you wanted to get to know somebody, if you wanted to do anything, now you can just slide into someone's DM. Back in the day, I remember uh, I went to one of your parties and you were telling me, you got to meet my publicist, Trey, Trey Mm -hmm. Davenport. And I remember I was in the middle of the night. I'm driving all the way across town, getting to the party, trying to get. She had Kim Zosiak or somebody with her and up in the VIP or something something like that. And I'm trying to get in and they're pushing me back, pushing me back, pushing me back. And I'm trying to get to Trey. Trey's my girl now. But back then, she won't give me the time of day. And I had to keep trying to put. But Mel sent me Mel. Mel sent me mail and and I had to keep at it, uh-huh. right? There was no situation, and now Trey's my girl, yeah. right? But at that time, Trey won't trying to hear from me, no. right? She had to see the eagerness that I had about how serious was I really trying to be in getting into this game, and so it was no sliding into the DM. So when people complain about things to them, I'm like, with technology, y'all complaining? They have no idea. No idea. The time, the energy, just you know. Physically going to see somebody mm-hmm. mean more than you know. anything else. Physically going to see somebody and potentially getting that door slammed in your face. Oh, every time. Could every drive two, three, four hours and get the door slammed in your face. Every time. So, okay. So then you had your hit record. The Dip. The Dip. And Freak then. By Freak Nasty. Okay. Right. Uh, he's from New Orleans. And so that record still, that's like a pop, you know, mm-hmm. 
I guess they, you know. You produced it, managed uh, him as an artist. Put it out. You put a it label. A label, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you were already. So which label was this again? Power. This is before. Um, Big Cat. Big Cat, okay. Way before, Way before that, okay. Yeah. Um, put it out um, as an independent label. Okay. You know, we're doing numbers. Mm-hmm. And it's only about three of us, mm-hmm. you know, as far as like in the office and going on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, but learn that system and through that system, a lot of the people that was working in distri- distribution and radio, they're still at radio. They're still, they just move higher up. Mm-hmm. So it's like my peoples. Mm-hmm. They watch. So they remember. They remember. Mm-hmm. They know relationships. Mm-hmm. Relationships is key. Relationships. Key. Yeah. That's what this whole You thing. can't do anything in this. <clears throat> you here sitting in here doing Cornology Day is relationships. Me being able to hit you up. Hey, man, I need you to come in. Exactly. Da, 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 da. Yep. I mean, that's just it. Relationships. And most people sleep on that. That's everything. You don't have nothing. Unless More you than the money. Th- yes. I agree with you on that because I think people put too much on money because money's here today and gone tomorrow. M- m- money is a figment of your imagination. Mm-hmm. This is why Trump is still free. Yep. Okay, relationships. relationships, and also he knows a little something, something, something. He but the re- he, he know he. But relationships, relationships will save you every time. Every time, and so you know, I learned that early mm-hmm. that relationships uh, was way more than money. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of athletes mm-hmm. come to me with unlimited funds, mm-hmm. thinking they can buy their way. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a rapper, or I have an artist, and mm-hmm. I just throw money at it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, it, it doesn't so work. you turn them down? Uh, most of the time, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. So then, okay, I know you... If be, it ain't no good music. If it ain't no good, good it's got to be good. First, so it's like, right? you know, Kobe and all of them was rapping at the time. Was it Allen Iverson had Shaq. a couple? Shaq. Yeah. They all they had... Shaq with platinum, though. But you know who was good, though? <laughs> what about Eddie Murphy and Jamie Foxx? They were singing, though, but yeah. they all kind of crossed over. Right. Jamie had some hits. Right. You still got to have great music. You got to have great music. But to me, when you had that type of money, you should be able to get dope producers. Yeah. I don't understand. I think having people who <clears throat> have the know-how, mm-hmm. right? Because without the know-how, you're going to spend a whole lot of excess money. Mm-hmm. Right? What, what's the saying? It's more expensive to hire an amateur Yeah. than to hire a professional. True. Just pay me what it is instead of paying him double. Because he messed up and you got to go back and fix it. Exactly. Okay, so then how did you become part of Big Cat Records? Okay, so moving from uh, Sherelle. Let's talk about Sherelle. Okay, who is Sherelle? Sherelle. Sherelle. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Oh, Monday, Sherelle, Monday. my girl. Yeah, you still <laughs> rock with Sherelle. I'm a girl. You st- I still see you uh, posting, uh, come out to the party. That is Sherelle still kicking it with, with Big Mail, y'all. Y'all remember Sherelle? Yeah, Sherelle's, okay. um, <laughs> you know, when I was still legit, she mm-hmm. asked me to uh, come on tour with her. And be her manager, tour manager, mm-hmm. production manager, security, <laughs> all in one. Okay. Right? And uh, no relationship or just? Relationship. Y'all had a relationship? Yeah. Girlfriend, I, boyfriend type thing? No, no, no. Not that type of relationship. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. You know me. I'm getting in your business. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> girl, I love you, girl. <laughs> no. Nah, uh-uh. All but, right. But no, she, she, she took, um, I think she took a risk. On a young nigga. And she liked you. Hustling. I did mm-hmm. her previous uh, single with her and Keith Murray. Mm-hmm. And um, she needed to go on the road. And at that time, she was dealing with Clarence and everybody. And so she said, hey, look, I'm, I'm going to pay you $300 a day, everything taken care of. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I'm like, what? Yeah, 300 was like off the chain. Everything's right? paid for and yeah, I'm 300 Yeah, right. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> so we traveled the U.S. Mm-hmm. From Alaska to, you know, riverboat casinos mm-hmm. performing uh, Saturday Love. Okay. I met Jimmy and Jam, Jimmy Jam and Lewis through them. Jim, yeah, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. I met them through them. <coughs> now, remember, I was young. so mm-hmm. you know, That's closest to Janet Jackson. I don't want to put no age on it, but I'm mm-hmm. definitely at that time. I'm super young. Mm-hmm. Uh, just touring with her, you know, we we on tour with uh, SOS band, we on tour with all those. Mm-hmm. So I met all of them early. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I got to a point where um, I was ready to come back home and just kind of settle down. Mm-hmm. And that was probably like around 99. 
it was it because were you in love at that point? Oh, uh, yeah, my life yeah. was kind of settling down. Uh huh. Because yeah. usually when a man wants to settle down yeah. and take her, this somebody didn't court your attention. Yeah, yeah, I was kind of settling down. Okay. And and, and so what I did was mm-hmm. I came back, settled down, kind of like you know uh, touring wasn't really it slowed down for mm-hmm. Sherelle. and um, I knew a guy named Fox. And Fox um, had got murdered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. He went to the radio station and blah, 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 and went back home and got robbed and murdered. Mm-hmm. Right? So Fox had artists. Mm-hmm. And so we had a mutual partner. We had, you know, my partner Cat. Mm-hmm. So we all kind of, so Big Cat was like keeping Fox flame running. Mm-hmm. That's how that came about. Mm-hmm. It was Fox's. He had a label called On Top of the World. Okay. On Top of the World had like Bucciano and Mad Click and uh, Tajay. You had a record called. You know anything about these folks' fines? I mean, it was before your time, right? Okay. But see, when you're <laughs> a real hip hop head, you're supposed to know your history. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna know. We're gonna know your history. Okay, go ahead now. So. <laughs> So Fox had these artists and, you know, unfortunately the situation. So we decided to take on his artists mm-hmm. and say we're going to keep it going. And so that's how kind of uh, Big Cat Records started in uh, about 98, 99. You know, all this time I was thinking that you were Big Cat. No, no, no. So it's, I have a partner named uh, Marlon. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so we have a, our brand is Big Cat Records. Mm-hmm. We call them Cat. But it's our brand. It's the brand. You know, for all this time, though, I was like, really? yeah, until I saw, you know, at one point he was really active on Instagram. He used to be going in on everybody yes. on Instagram. Yes. And then I, I saw where he had Big Cat beside his name. I'm like, but that ain't male. Yeah, yeah, no, that's my partner. So, okay. Yeah, so we came together for that Fox and, mm-hmm. you know, keeping the flame going. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just grinded, really. We were grinding until mm-hmm. it really became a passion. And we came so tight. Mm-hmm. That, you know, with our skills that, you know, we can take over, you know, do what we do. We can be, we we the QC of back then, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, because QC rocking and rolling right now, right? We're rolling right now, but mm-hmm. then it's like, okay. It was Big Cat. It's That's Big all Cat. everybody knows. It's Big Cat. Right. Uh, uh, at some point in time, I think CTE came on the scene. Okay. But we were pushing records and pushing artists and doing all the street work. Because mm-hmm. I remember, so Big Cat, just so you guys know, if you want to know some of the artists that are most notably... Um, associated with Big Cat, let's say Gucci Mane, yeah. Lemonade, that's my dude. That's your dude. Oh, <laughs> when they had that whole Gucci and Jeezy, uh-huh. everybody was shocked that I was Team Gooch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why you was got, they shocked you though? Gotta be special. <laughs> you gotta why? Special to be Team Gooch. Why? Okay, so tell me why you got to be special because I was wondering. Everybody was like clowning me online. We're the underdog. Like Gucci, really? Uh, Gucci the underdog. Think about it now. So at that time. Um, you know, Big Cat, CT, Gucci, mm-hmm. Jeezy. Jeezy is signed to Def Jam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Gucci is signed to Big Cat Records. Records. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Two, two, you know, we got some, we over here eating pizza. And, <laughs> you know, and he over there drinking, eating caviar, yeah, right? Eating oxtails and pizza, you uh-huh. know, <laughs> doing our thing. But, but Gucci, you put his voice on the mic and it's a wrap. Yeah. So did you guys discover Gucci? I don't want to say discovered. Okay. I think that we, as businessmen, mm-hmm. uh, hit it off. Okay. At the time. Okay. Uh, because he was already kind of like, you know, doing his thing mm-hmm. uh, with him and HB. But uh, he needed a label. He needed a team behind him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we were that team mm-hmm. that understood. That understood. So you guys made a lot of noise with Gooch. Yeah. All right. Then we also have our girl Rashida. Rashida. Right. So Rashida actually was been paving the ground for a long time. Most people didn't start to really know who she was until loving hip hop. Right. But Rashida was out there doing it for you. I remember, you know, she's been doing it for years, 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 years. Yep. Um, <clears throat> okay, I see Eminem here. You had a relationship with Eminem? I had way back. This was before BK. Okay, so what, what kind of relationship did you have with Eminem? That was a production relationship. Way, okay. like, we're talking like 96. Okay. Like, right when, like, Cause, Power. So, he, oh, because Eminem is 
one of the coldest. He the coldest. And so at the time we were, um, this is all. This also the time where the hot boys and all of them were trying to get on. Mm-hmm. But I had a, a relationship. And so production wise, I was working with him, mm-hmm. you know, and that's kind of ended it. But he did, you know, he got with Rosenberg and, you know, Eminem. Was, but then it was all about production. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I see Kaya. Kaya. My neck, yeah. my back. Yeah. My neck and my back. Was you part of that? Yeah, so Kaya. <laughs> so Drea over there looking at me like, oh, my God, Miss Ebony. <laughs> <laughs> you know about that, Drea? Yes, I okay, I didn't know oh. that. Was. <laughs> uh, Drea, okay. You know? You know about that? Oh. Uh, what? What you know about that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Kaya, yeah, Kaya's my girl. Like, um, we did an album called Nasty Music. Mm-hmm. And um, me and her toured together. She ain't cuss you out, Mel? No. Okay. Kaya, no. She seemed like she will cuss you she out. She will, but okay. she don't cuss me out. Okay. You know, All we, right. We had a great, we have a, we have a, a great, great relationship. relationship. Yeah. And so, like I said, when you tour with somebody and you're on the road. Mm-hmm. It's a different relationship. Yeah. like Because you're taking care of them. I'm taking care of you. Yeah. I'm taking you to Detroit <laughs> Radio. I'm taking you to Toledo Radio, Chicago. You know, we traveling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Good, bad, or indifferent, you know, promoter pay no pay, beef mm-hmm. or no beef. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so you create this relationship where it's like, hey, it's just us against them. Mm-hmm. The underdog. Mm-hmm. Bougie Bonton. Wow, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. But you, like, you got to be a real reggae head to To know Bougie Bonton. Yeah, to really understand Bougie. Bougie. Who had, uh, I think he had the top reggae record last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year? Maybe last year. Wow. Uh, maybe year Because you know Afrobeats is the thing. I'm surprised you're not up in that space. Afrobeats? Well, um, I have some opportunities. Okay, you need to talk to me about those opportunities, <laughs> okay? Because Afrobeats is where the money's at. Opportunities, <laughs> like, are presenting themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, people are talking to me about, you know, some of those things, but. You need to be all over that. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think that now I've kind of set a base of what our business is. Mm-hmm. And you want to stay in those parameters. I, I don't necessarily want to stay in those parameters. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm willing to grow mm-hmm. and, and move. Um, I just want to be as tight as possible. Mm-hmm. You know, if that makes better sense. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not, of course I want to grow. Mm-hmm. you got to grow. But you're going to be ve- you're gonna be very careful about the decisions that you choose to make. Yeah. You're not going to just go there because the money is there. No, no, no. I, mm-hmm. I, I have to be able to, A, uh, deliver. Mm-hmm. You know, if I take on the Afro Reach project, I have to have the people that's going to help me mm-hmm. deliver this project. Mm-hmm. So, of course, right now, rap is great. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can deliver that. Uh, pop, yes. Mm-hmm. Even country mm-hmm. and gospel. You know, Canton Jones is one of my guys. Mm-hmm. Um, you've been you've been with Canton for a long time, but Canton is not with Big Cats, though, right? That's your no. other project, right? Yeah, that's, that's why I was just talking about Big Cats for well, now. Yeah, I'm kind of like running things together, okay? Right now because <clears throat> at some point in time, um, um, I created Radar, mm-hmm. and Radar. T- matter of fact, that was because of Canton that I created Radar Live. Mm-hmm. Um, we had talked and we wanted to do some business, but he didn't want the street. Brand tied to him, right? Right. So right. I created Radar mm-hmm. Live mm-hmm. based off of that, mm-hmm. um, and that's been great. We won, you know, we won a Stellar mm-hmm. off, off one of the uh, Want to Do It records, mm-hmm. um, but in that span into country, uh, when I got into Kurt Thomas, mm-hmm. and just other things, uh, non street records mm-hmm. that um, yeah, I felt like where we were growing. Yep, yep. Because I would say now your brand is more, I would say, very diverse. That's the goal. Because I can see you at any day of the week. You can be with a country artist. You can be with a gospel artist. And some days I may see you doing something with sports, bikes, yes. technology. It, you have really opened up the realm of yes. things. Yes. But I'm sure in order to do that, it's all about understanding the business practices behind everything that you do, right? Right. So I know one of the most challenging times that you guys had was the debate or dispute with Gucci, right? That was one of the most yeah. public, right? Most public. What exactly happened, Mel? Okay, so, wow, this is this is good. I'm, I'm glad you asked me that. Mm-hmm. So uh, without telling too much detail, mm-hmm. um, you know, some of it was over finances. Mm-hmm. You know, remember at that time, uh, we had a artist 
uh, who um, had got into it with another artist and somebody died. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to keep it right there mm-hmm. in the middle. Right. Um, during that time, basically, we bankrolled the legal fees. Okay. Which was crazy. Mm-hmm. To try, try, you know, to try. I can to, imagine. To keep him out of jail. Jail. Mm-hmm. Right, and these are having lawyers and investigators, and it was a lot. I, I remember sending Gucci to New York to do 106 and Park, and uh, they had dropped the whole, um, you know, indictment. And he had to come back, and we had to have him turn around and come back. But um, it was crazy, and so through those financials, you know, we had some disagreements. Um, you know, I don't want to go too much far into that, mm-hmm. but um, you know, at the end of the day, this is a business, mm-hmm. and so anything that kind of uh, gets put forth is considered an advance. Right, you got to pay it back. Yes. Most artists don't understand that. What is it? Do they think it's a gift? What is it? Um, Mel, I, what's the I mindset? I think at that time, you know, and and you know, giving you know, whop as much credit as possible. I think at that time, him just not understanding this ain't personal. Mm-hmm. We, we're affecting your life personally. Right. You know, because guess what? We're getting you out of a, this is a crazy situation. But it's not personal. Like, this is, we're doing this mm-hmm. because we have an investment in you. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So we need to get all, all that's recoupable. Mm-hmm. We, you know, it's, we're friends, we're cool, mm-hmm. but it's still a business. So when you guys dropped that unauthorized mm-hmm. album of Gucci's, Mm-hmm. Is that when he lost his head, or is that when, is that when everything went to? So question. So it really wasn't unauthorized. Okay, so that's what the streets think, right? That's what they think, right? You know, honestly, I would never drop anything that wasn't authorized. Authorized, okay. Like, if I don't have my paperwork together. So again, so let's back it up. Uh-huh. So it's a difference. <laughs> so that's because people think an authorization means <laughs> I said yes. You said yes when you didn't. Or you did sign the paperwork. Right. So you're saying that the paperwork and every you you actually own the right to right. drop it. I didn't have to call him on the phone and say, is it okay? That's where people are messed up at, right? Yeah. Paperwork is always going, you know. The paperwork is the authorization. It's the business. Like, right. We, 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 you know, it wasn't about trying to do something underhanded. Mm-hmm. I have the right. To do it. And I had to get my money back. And it's all this is all business. We it's do business. this for money, right? Right. I right. do this for fun. I right. love music, but I do this for money. You make money, right. Yeah, this is how I feed my family. Right. So um, a lot of times when I hear that artists are complaining about those t- situations, I have to look at who is your representation, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And if somebody did it, they did it because they had the right to They had the right to do it. Because, <clears throat> you know... I hear a lot of people, um, they give a lot of beef to, to Diddy. Right. They try to, you know, he did this, he did this to the artist. You know, they were still riding the subway and they had a hit record, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. The question is, what did you sign? What did you sign? At the end of the Nobody's day, holding the gun to your head, right? Nope. No, nope. it's all business. And so if you signed off for it, don't complain about it. Don't complain. Okay, so what about Master P? You seen all this stuff going on with Master P and Romeo? Him, him and Romeo, like, they should not be doing this. They should not be on, on Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> about- but but let's let's back it up, though. Yeah. So Romeo is saying he really didn't have a choice. Well, I think that at that time, who was, he was a minor. And, so and that was his father. If you're a minor, the parents have the control. Mm-hmm. This is what it is. But what are where are the ethics? So a lot of people come back to me because I'm I'm all, I'm standing with Diddy ten toes down because I'm like I'm a businesswoman, so I'm looking at the business dynamics, right? I, I don't think you misused anyone when it's 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 in front of you, black and white, and you signed off over. Now when it's no longer advantageous for you, then you want to turn. You can't do that, right? Right. 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 So my question is. Where's the ethics, though? Shouldn't there? So some people question the fact of, okay, Ebony, I understand the contract, but Diddy needs to practice better ethics is what they come back to me and say. Is that his job to do that? I mean, I think that's a part of all of our jobs is to, especially in our own community, mm-hmm. is to, you know, do business ethically. Mm-hmm. Um, but remember, this is a business. It's not personal. And, and you know, business, business is personal. But in business, like I tell everybody, somebody's going to walk away from the table a winner and somebody's going to walk away from the table a loser. 
Correct or no? You try to get win-win. You try, but is that possible? I think it's possible. How? If you have a artist who doesn't have the know-how, doesn't have the funding, mm-hmm. doesn't have the roadmap, mm-hmm. doesn't have the team mm-hmm. to do this, then you got to give up something. Mm-hmm. You know, it, a label deal, an artist deal, a recording deal is just a glorified loan. That's it. We're going to loan you the money to get to try to get you here because guess what? It's a 100% risk. It's not guaranteed. Yeah, because think about this. How many artists have you signed versus the ones that actually made you money? The losses are way... <laughs> yeah, the, the the loss is crazy, way, right? Yeah, like I, I could talk about the losses all day and they are rarely overshadowed. You know, probably triple times, mm-hmm. quadruple times mm-hmm. the winners. You mm-hmm. know, uh, uh, 20 losses to one win. You mm. know, it just happens like that. But, you know, the thing about... Me mm-hmm. is I'm a risk taker. So am I. Mm-hmm. I don't mind like I'm I'm gonna I'm spend it all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna hustle it back if I need to. If you need to, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody's not a risk taker, and so some of these games that's these rich people hobbies, music, mm-hmm. it's a rich man hobby, uh, gaming, the gaming professional gaming world. Well, at one point, though, music was also a place for to launder money. Yes. Very easy to do that back Entertainment then. Entertainment, clubs, mm-hmm. you know, some mm-hmm. cash business. So, um, you know, you can easily, you know, hire money, I guess, if you need to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, I try to keep it, you know, mm-hmm. in, in this state, I mm-hmm. keep it. A business is a formula. I know what I'm looking for. I know what works for us. I know what's the return. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I know, so I can move like that. You can move. Yeah. Grammys. Have you ever been to the Grammys? My boy over there going to the Grammys. My yeah, boy yeah, is yeah. going. Did he tell yeah, you about that? Because yeah, he tell everybody that walked through that door. I know he. As soon as you walked through that door, I'm gonna be at the Grammys. No, no, no. On the red the, carpet. That, that's love. Yeah, mad love, mad love, love. to Fonzie Fonz. Fonzie Fonz. He gonna be at the Grammys. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I just I came into Academy uh, in 2021. Okay. 20. I'm what man? You were in the Academy. Yes. Where my Grammy tickets at? I, I gotta get tickets from somebody. Where are my tickets? Hey, make sure. You- <laughs> <laughs> Where are my tickets? Ticket. <laughs> I, I do get you know mm-hmm. tickets mm-hmm. And, and that type of thing, but uh, I just came into the Academy. I think 2020. 2021. It mm-hmm. was like during the COVID. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Congratulations. Was, thank you. Appreciate it. it was, you know, like, you need hey. to be really somebody need to be fighting for you to have a walk. Uh, uh, was it was a star? I'm working All on fa- the star. Yeah, you need to. I'm working on the star. Yes, because I'm, I'm yeah, 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 you need to because this is the thing. A lot of times people, you know, a lot of times you have the artists. They'll say, I, "If it's not for me." I'm the one who made all the money. I did, I did, I did. And the artist really, okay, you may have wrote the song, may, because most of these artists today are not even writing, right? But without the distribution, without the business, without the push, without somebody behind you being able to orchestrate the move, you're not going anywhere, no right? Way. And a lot of times the artists want to forget about that and they don't want to pay. Mm-hmm. They feel like it all should go to them. Mm-hmm. And so I think individuals like yourself, Need to be celebrated. The behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of us mm-hmm. um, that really push the buttons. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to say gatekeepers, but there are gatekeepers mm-hmm. who have to kind of control what's coming in. Mm-hmm. I'm not condoning them. Right. I'm just saying that they exist. So they can. So let's talk about that a little bit because you got my ears up. Gatekeepers exist, but yeah. that's in the industry. In any, because you know Kanye talked about them a lot. Yeah, yeah, he said Corey is a gatekeeper. Corey, which Corey? Corey Gamble. Oh, okay. He well, broke it down. He said it. Well, I mean, hey. A lot of people don't want to. This is the thing, Mel. A lot of things we don't talk about publicly. We know what exists, but we just don't talk about it. But a lot of people don't want to accept the fact that what that man was saying is true. Did you hear what, what Kanye was saying? Uh, some of it, not all of it. Not all of it, yeah, I'm okay. not like a super Kanye fan. What is wrong? Okay, now Kanye <laughs> is acting a fool right now, right? But, that's my, but, but Kanye is... We cool, but I'm just like... A lyrical genius. Yeah. Top 10. Who are some of your top 10 artists? Top 10? Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, 
So. Not just the dudes that you produced. Chris Bodie. Okay, I don't know Chris. You know Chris? Okay, who, who's Chris? He's an amazing trumpet player. I'm talking about hip hop. Oh, well, you didn't say it. Okay, um, let's go back up. You Top 10 hip <laughs> Top 10 hip hop. Top 10 hip hop. Uh, -huh. uh Pop. Okay. Okay, Pop being number 1 or number 10. Meaning he's going to be put him in order right. Put him now? Okay, okay. <sighs> All right, we don't have to put him. <laughs> All right, so Pac, would he be one of your top or? He'd be at the top. Okay, who uh, else? Pac, uh, I give it to Jigga. Yeah. Um, who else? Um, Outkast. Okay. Specifically 3000, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Rayvon. I don't know Rayvon. You know Rayvon? Top dog. I don't know Rayvon. He done with it. <laughs> right? Really? I I don't know. He's new. Okay. Uh maybe been around a year or two. And you been you putting him in the in the in the group. Uh, Lyrically. Yeah. Uh, Lyrically. He, this dude gotta be dope. He's dope. Okay. I'm gonna check Rayvon out. Okay, so Rayvon. Um My style may be a little different too, so you know what I listen to and what I kind of put up here is mm -hmm. kinda uh Drake. Drake, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. he's the leader of this century. Yep, you know, Drake I, doing it. I got to give it to You Drake. can't take it away. He's He's been able to successfully be commercial and still be dope. Dope. Yeah. Pop, Drake, uh, Rayvon. I gave Rayvon, like, that's a slot that I'm giving him because he's lyrically. I'm going to check Rayvon out because. You know what? Because I'm putting Rayvon, uh, okay. I'm, I got to put Kendrick. Oh, yeah, Kendrick, good. Because yep, they're yep, from the yep. same label. Okay. Mm -hmm. They just not putting no money behind Rayvon. Well, Rayvon's just new. Well, you know, you know this too. Our labels can only put big money behind one major. Sp well, this I'm from the independent world, mm -hmm. so I operate differently from. The, but it's all the same mentality. Mm -hmm. um, but I try to have an artist in each lane, and each lane have a their own budget. But if Rayvon is that dope, and I don't know who he, he is, but I know Kendrick. He's dope. All right, who else you got? Um, so, top 10 hip hop. Mm -hmm. uh, top 10 hip hop. Man, it's going to get critical. It's no joke. All time. Now, we're going to go back to KRS One. Oh. We're going to go back a little bit to Rakim. Okay, so. I'm, let's, I'm let's trying do to. That then. Okay, okay, let's go back. Okay. okay. All right. We got to get it to Rakim. No, we got to give it to, like, Big Daddy Kane. Yeah, I was about to say. Okay. Big Daddy was bad before he became too commercial. Yeah, Big Daddy. Because Big Daddy really put well, Jay on. We tell him my, <laughs> we tell it all. I know we tell him, but you know, Big Daddy put Jay on. Yeah, he put Jay on. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, Run DMC. Okay. They was the you know my 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 folks I looked up to. Mm -hmm. You know, in middle school and as artists in high school. Um, so let's see, boom, boom. Yeah, I mean, you know, M. M is bad. Gotta give it to him. Um, I'm gonna kind of leave it right there. You ain't put nobody on the West Coast. Him? Yeah. Or Detroit. Well, he Detroit. He's really not West Coast. West Coast he Midwest. It's like, uh, Kendrick. yeah, Kendrick and Rayvon. They both from. The West okay. Coast. Well, then I, I noticed you didn't put any females on the list. I didn't. And what's up with that? They gotta get their shit together. Ah, what you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm going in on that. What you mean by that? So now you know for them to be all time. Mm -hmm. I believe that they're making you know crazy strides right now. Like we're doing great things. But don't get me wrong. Okay, we, we're gonna talk about Salt and Pepper. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about all of them. But I think that just overall, I can't. I'm not putting them right. I got some. What about MC Light? MC Light was cold. Super cold. Roxanne Shantae. Super cool. Bad. Roxanne, you gave her the mic and it was over. I still watch the movie. Yes. <laughs> so so you wouldn't put them in there? No. Queen Latifah. Well, Queen Latifah. She's commercial for me. Yeah, very commercial. Queen Latifah, Money Love, and all them. We love them, but they're commercial. Very yeah. commercial. Uh, maybe VA, Lady of Rage. Yeah, Lady of Rage. You yeah. Know, but, you know, it's limited when they mm -hmm. talk about female in the top ten I give them much respect, but, you know. I think the unfortunate part is that 
we the, the women have <sighs> diminished because all they want to talk about is strip clubbing and sex. Mm. Wow. That's right. You know, right? I think that's uh, trying to appeal to an audience. Right. Uh, which doesn't last long. Mm-hmm. But if you're authentically you, you know, if you're like SZA, mm-hmm. her. Megan. Megan. Yeah, I like Megan. Okay, you are one of the few that is, is speak, well, well, I, I'm, Megan. I'm not against, I'm, I'm not talking about the situation. The situation. Yeah, but right. I like Megan. I think Megan is bad. Yeah, I think she she found a niche. Her style, her sound, she carries it, right. da-da-da. Yeah. She got it. Um, but all she talking about is sex. Yeah, uh, and we can't take too much more of that. No, we can't. The, the market can't take it too much. You can't take too much more of that, and, and our community can't. Cardi, Megan, mm-hmm. who else? Uh, uh, young Miami. Young, uh, JT. Yeah. Uh, Glorilla just hit the scene. Yeah. And, and Lotto. And what's what's different? What's what's <laughs> different about any all all you gotta do? Is sex, sex, sex. I'm down for nah, sex. Nah, nah, I'm the nah, best nah. in the world in the time for sex. Yeah, nah. I'm swinging on a pole, and there you, know, you have it. Last forever. That's it. You know. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's all. You said swinging <laughs> on a pole. Forever. And last, that's it. I mean, what else is there to talk? That's all I'm hearing. You know, they just had some really dope beats behind it. But I just want, I don't know. The one thing we can say about Queen Latifah and Lady, they were talking about something different. True. Upliftment. True. It was right? bigger than, it was bigger than, 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 than sex. It was and, bigger than that. It was more life mm-hmm. uh, lyrics. You know, the other thing I'm liking what I'm seeing, because hip-hop is growing up. We got hip-hop, we got folks now that, uh, were hip hoppers that are now going entering seventy, right? So now we're seeing them growing up, and we're seeing them passing the baton. I one of the challenges I had is when it looked like it was real difficult for some of the hip hop heads to pass the baton. It bothered me when Little Kim had beef with Nicki when she came into the mm-hmm. game, as if Nicki was trying. But Kim was a decade older than Nikki and right. now Nikki had an issue passing the baton to Cardi. Right. Now I like the way Cardi seems to be working with Glorilla. Right. I think that we have to realize that once we get to a certain point, it's okay to say, let me show you how to do it because I'm now moving on to the next level. Right. You gotta be able to share the game. Right. And you gotta be able to move Jesus. on to the next level. I don't think it's wise for Kim at damn near fifty to still be out there, I I don't. Right. She's she should have a residency in Vegas right now. Kim should have a residency, but Kim should also be the helm of her own business line. True that. Doing something she should not necess- she should not have to be on those stages. We just talked about before you came in here about retirement. She should be thinking about next level. She should not be, her money should not be tied to shows. Yeah, you know, um, I think that has a lot to do with her circle. Mm-hmm. You know, who's really talking to her mm-hmm. and showing her, hey, you know, your audience has grown up. Mm-hmm. You got to kind of grow with your audience. And what's new? Yeah. What's new? Because the young folks laughing. Like, auntie, like, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> they not respecting it. It's a joke. And I feel like I hate to see legends become a joke. Like, I often wonder what would Biggie be doing there? What would Pac be doing there? Like, what wow. would they be doing? It's always, that's why I always give, you know, accolades to Jigga. Because Jigga is one of the ones who actually made it. Right. 50. Right. Made it. Um, you know, some, you know, we see them Nas. I give mad props to him because he made it, he did a little bit what you did. He, he merged on over to the tech scene, making quiet meals over there in technology. Yep. And he diversified it from a point of it doesn't have to be black, right? right? Everybody has a ring. Mm-hmm. So that's what I really want to see more of from our artists is what's next for them and being okay to graduate to the next level and not necessarily try to hold back for that, no, I right? That. Yeah, I think that we're talking about it. Um, it's an it's a everyday conversation mm-hmm. that I know we have. Mm-hmm. I have with artists, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's building a merch brand or... Just different ideas, mm-hmm. especially nowadays with the music business. You have to have so you know other things going on. 
to really be sustainable. You have to. You have to. Because this is the first time, I think, this decade when we're seeing billionaire hip-hop artists. Mm -hmm. You know, back when we were growing up, the hip-hop artists weren't even becoming millionaires. They may have been a couple of hundred heirs, but most of them was being taken advantage of at that time, so they weren't even getting that. But to see... You know, hip hop artists, Kanye and Jigga, and even though Rihanna is not a hip hop artist, but to see yeah. that type of making billions, yeah. that is no joke. That's sick. That's, I mean, I just got to take my head off for it, right? It wasn't really possible then. I, I think that um, now with technology and, you know, we removing middlemen from between mm-hmm. the distribution and all these other things that used to be in the middle, mm-hmm. right? You got to go to the store and go buy the record. Now you just go on one, two, three, stream it. Uh, yeah, I can record it tonight and it could be out tomorrow, it, it, period. It's a different time. Different. Uh, but the money is different, too. Mm-hmm. Because there was a period, do you remember when there was a big issue with Napster? Yes. That was a transition for your industry. Yes. And I know most of the people that were in your seat when Napster came out were shaking in their boots. Yes. Because you guys didn't know what that was going to play out like. going out the window. No right. more CDs, Napster. Everybody get everything free from Napster and LimeWire. Did y'all think it was over? <laughs> Did y'all think it was over? Um, You know, I didn't think it was over. Mm-hmm. I think that trying to understand what's next. The what's next is the key. Yeah. And even now. Mm-hmm. Trying to understand what is next in the music industry. So what's next for you? What's next for me? Yeah, what's next? Well, I mean, we gonna we we got a couple of hit records we got to drop. Okay. Um, we have Laika. She's from Toronto. Okay, so hip hop. Pop. Pop. Okay. Yeah, pop artist. All right. Um, Foreign J from Detroit. Mhm. Little Six from East Atlanta. Mhm. These artists are coming up. Dre Day, R and B. You know, King. Mm-hmm. Um, these artists are, are coming up, so I'm continuously rolling them out. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I have the gaming team, so the professional gaming world mm-hmm. is something I deal That's with. That's dope. Um, mm-hmm. And I've been in that now almost uh, 10, 11, 12 mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. Um, continue to build out that technology and that, that, that gaming experience and um, also... Uh, Land. Mm-hmm. I think we were talking about that earlier. Is that's just a few things on the list. Mm-hmm. Um, TV at all? TV. I think it'll come. Mm-hmm. Um, I, not, I haven't been like focused on like getting on TV, but mm-hmm. I think that the right time, mm-hmm. um, it'll come. Um, mm-hmm. Also, so teaching the game is something I love to do. But is the game the same? Can, if you teach the game from the perspective when we when we grew up, mm-hmm. would it be relevant today? The hustle Mm -hmm. is what separates you. Maybe not the technology, Mm -hmm. and and, and, you know, but you got you know when you're hustling. Well, now these folks ain't hustling no more. All they got to do is upload a song on YouTube or TikTok, and they become a phenomenon in a minute. Come on, man! They're not doing it the way we used to do it, Mel. Right? They 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 change it up, but to put more checks in your column. Mm -hmm. You, you got to get your hustle game better. Mm-hmm. You can go and upload and take a risk mm-hmm. of being one in a hundred million, mm-hmm. or you can be that hustler to get your chances a little better, mm-hmm. right? And so my thing is really not necessarily teaching the game that is old or antiquated, but teaching the game from a hustler standpoint. Either you got it or you don't. I don't know if it could be taught. I'm being serious. I, I was born with You're this right. thing. I was born with it. Right. You know, I interviewed... I interviewed Trinidad James, um, maybe a month or so ago, and Trinidad Young, but he had that hustle. It's something that he had that same thing you and I got, Mm -hmm. and he grew up in a different era. So I don't know if you can teach these kids what we got. It's either you got it or you don't. It's it's the the want for something better. Like, yeah, you know, the drive. I, I believe that the impossible take two weeks. And nobody owes you nothing. Nothing like. That's the thing nowadays. No disrespect, Nick. To the kids, right? <laughs> you know I mean? but, <laughs> no, but seriously, like, uh-huh. you know, instantaneous. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that era. I don't either. All I know is grind and get it and get it. And nobody owes me nothing. Nothing. And, so and 
solid relationships. relationships. I'm real big on not shitting on the folks that came and helped me because it's important, Mel, to maintain those. Because the same people you you saw going up the ladder, you're going to see them again. Yeah, definitely. And, And I think that's the problem. I think a lot of... I can't say the youth, but I think right now a lot of people have this mentality to just screw whoever until I can get to the next level and then screw them until I get to the next level. They don't care about the relationships. And I think longevity, to be talking about a career that spans over 30 years, you have to have strong relationships. That's everything. Yep. When, 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 when you need the knowledge, when you need to get to the next step. You know, my relationships, I probably guard them more than anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm like that too. Right? Don't sit on my man. That's and don't and listen and don't ask me for nobody's contact information because I'm like this. Would you don't call me, ask me for Mel's number. Mm-hmm. For what? Mm-hmm. Because if you're not going to nurture the relationship and do right by Mel, nah, because Mel's gonna take your call because you said I knew Ebony. Exactly. And then you gonna say, Because you knew Ebony, I'm gonna take care of you and then you screw Mel over, then that's the relationship. I'm calling Ebony like Ebony. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Right. And so that's the thing. People don't understand that all they want is let me get Mel's number. But you know how many years me and Mel had to get to a point of, of building that relationship? And folks don't understand that fostering. Yeah, they don't get it. They, you know, if you were the fly on the wall, if they were a fly on the yep. wall, you know, this, this didn't come, you know, overnight. It was mm-hmm. no light switch. Mm-hmm. But I believe in that, Evan. I believe in the grind. Yep. I believe in fostering relationships. You have to. It, it can't be something that you're doing because you're checking a box. You have to actually believe it. No, I believe it. Yep. I believe in going to the gym and talking and we... Yeah, we used to be on that daggone <laughs> elliptical machine. Y'all, me and Mel used to work out. We knew exactly what time we was going to be there every day at the YMCA. Yeah. I was on the elliptical. He was right beside me. I was like, you know, Mel, we need to drop that Gucci Man documentary. Yep. We need to this, this. I was like, I got this idea. I got that. Yep. Idea. Every day, Mel's like, what you got number? What's up? What's up? Yeah. We used to go through all types of ideas. It's real, it's real right? They believe it. They think, oh, we just. No, no, no. We knew exactly what time to expect the other person to be there. And that's just part of life, right? Right? That's yep. part of building those relationships, yep. right? Yep. So, Mel, we appreciate you coming in here and spending a little bit of time with us I today. I appreciate you, too. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. And how can people follow you? So, uh, on Twitter, mm-hmm. it's uh, at Mailman Music, M-E-L-M-A-N-M-U-S-I-C. On um, IG, is at Radar underscore live. Okay. 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 And... You ain't doing TikTok and doing Snapchat. TikTok. And, Snapchat. Yeah, I ain't on time for, you know, I, they just got me on TikTok. But uh, it's the whole of Twitch and a whole bunch of other stuff Twitch, out there. Like, now, I what is Twitch. Twitch? What is that? So that's like the new or that's the, the gamers YouTube. Okay. You know, that's okay. the technology head YouTube. And so I do live on Twitch uh, because I'm in the gaming world. Mm-hmm. Um, but so can they follow you there? Yeah, Radar Live. Radar Live. Yeah, okay. It's, it's definitely relevant. If, okay. If you're a content creator. I keep hearing streamer, about it. Mm-hmm. You need to be on Twitch. Be on <laughs> well, thank y'all for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Cornology. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't getting no money if you're constantly worried about what everybody else got to say. If you constantly got your eyes on what everybody else doing, you ain't getting no money. When it comes down to posting a deal, I get it done. Every single one.